All right, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? My name is Kurt and welcome to Walt Disney Landers. If you guys are new here, welcome. Hope you guys enjoy your stay. If you are a returning guest, welcome back. We're glad to see you. This is NCP season five draft analysis. If you guys didn't check out last season, it was a phenomenal season. Not for just from our standpoint, but from everyone. We had really good roster coaches, really good uploads, really fun season. But we are here for season five. We have a lot of new coaches, a lot of new faces, and uh, a lot of returning faces as well. I'm very excited. Last season, we ended up being the runners up, losing out to Owen. Um, so hopefully this season we can take it all the way. We have a really cool draft and uh, it's not going to be easy. We got a really, really tough lineup this season, but I'm hoping that we can take it all the way. So if you guys are excited for a new season of NCP and are excited for us to uh, draft analysis and run through the season, hit the like button and subscribe button as well as we are on the grind. Maybe we got that draft league grind. So let's talk a little bit about the league and then we'll talk uh, about our draft. So this season, we have, I believe it was uh, 10 returning coaches from last season, and then six new coaches. Uh, everyone will be linked down below, but just to run through them for you guys. Uh, returning, we have myself, we have Owen, we have Grandmaster d -Way. We are the three new commissioners of NCP since John and Zombie stepped down. I talked about that a little bit more in my recap vi video of last season, so make sure you guys go check that out that went up yesterday. Um, so we have the us three, and then also returning, we have Olivia Sama, we have Vepsis, we have Shuckle King, Six Foot Hacks, Mid Pokey Master. I gotta move this so I can see the doc. We have Ultra Player, uh, uh, Ultra Player, and Matt O'Shea is the final returning coach from last season. And then our new coaches this season consists of Under the Radar Kelly, coach of the Maryland Joe Terrapins, Platinum Howler and the Delta Gligars, uh, Kyle and the Miami Dawn fans, Invivid Color and the South Texas Sableye. Um, oh, also JV is returning from last season. I'm sorry, I thought JV was new coach. Nope, he's returning from last season as well after taking over for Alex. And last but not least is my boy Davion. Uh, coach of the Vegas Golden D Knights, who had to come in last minute as a replacement mid-draft. So, shouts to all of them. Everybody will be linked down the below. Everybody is a phenomenal battler and a phenomenal content creator, so please go check them out. But, they all got to get out the way because this is our chip. So, this season, last season, we had, like, ninth pick. Yeah, we had ninth picks. So that was bottom on the dock. We had ninth pick, and that kind of sucked, but we did get Celestila and Latias, and we got a pretty good core there. This season, I was really wanting a high tier pick because there were a lot of high tier ones I really want to try. I really wanted to try Coco. I really wanted to try Zygarde. I knew I wasn't going to get it unless I was pick one, but Urshifu looked really fun, as did Dragapult. So I wasn't getting it unless I got one of the top two, which, spoilers, I did not. Um, there was a lot of fun stuff I really wanted to try. And uh, unfortunately, we got the opposite of what I wanted. We got 15th. Now, 15th has its pros and cons. Pros is that it's basically pseudo wheel. I can talk to Kyle, who was 16th, and we can just not snipe each other, so we basically have wheel pick. At the same time, I'm not getting anything crazy the first round. Um, or at least I thought. So, sitting down to tr uh, plan my draft, you really can't. I couldn't plan anything out until it was very close to me. Um, I'm going to move the dock, actually, under this monitor so I can look over to it while I'm referencing things. So, there wasn't anything, like, I could really expect uh, going into the draft. So, I kind of just let it happen. And until it got to, like, vivid, Jesse vivid area um, is when I started looking at stuff. So, Jesse, unfortunately, took Zygarde at pick 13. And it came, or what was that, uh, 14, 13, 12, uh, pick 11, sorry. It came really close to us. I really, really, really wanted Zygarde. I think it would be a phenomenal mod for me to use. Uh, I love that fat, bulky offense, but unfortunately, Jesse took it. Um, and there were actually some late round mons that came through. Uh, in the bottom half of the draft, Shuckle King got Latios, Leo got Victini, Jesse got Zygarde, Vivid got Coco at pick, was that 11? What is that? Uh, no, that's 12. I picked 12 Coco. I was like, I really thought I was going to get Coco there for a second. Uh, Matt took Zapdos. Uh, JV took Clef when I told him to take Celesteela, but uh, he took Clef instead. Uh, so then it came to me, and my options were actually really good. I had the options of Lando, of Aegislash, um, and Selly were the main three I was looking at. Lando, T, Aegislash, and Celesteela. Um, I knew right away I wanted to get Lando T, and then I wasn't sure which steel I wanted to pair with it. I was going to see what Kyle took uh, afterwards, because there's no way he was taking both. So, obviously, uh, kind of already said it, our first pick is going to be none other. Returning from the DDL, our doubles draft league, Mufasa, our Lander Asterian. If you guys don't know what Lando T does, it does just about everything you want it to, and a little bit more. Uh, Lando T was obviously a lot better in Gen 7, because it had that reliable Z fly, and it's a lot better in the Dynamax format, because it has that reliable Dynamax fly. Whereas in singles, it doesn't get any actual single uh, flying stab that's not fly that takes two turns. So, but Landorus is a mon I've used in the past. I've won chips with it. I've won a lot of games with it. I love Lando T. It's a phenomenal Pokemon. It 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 rewards creativity in building. 
it it rewards not just going choice scarf bird it's one of those pokemon where you can just throw like defensive or choice scarf on it and probably do okay but i feel like for someone like me who actually like goes in depth in builds and tries things and uh actually puts thought into his builds lando t rewards those who really think with their teams and i love landorus uh you already know air quote gypsy king spreads or as Ch uh envy would call them chinese spreads love doing those uh just to make my pokemon the most efficient that they can lando t offers reliable ground stab um defog rocks u-turn knockoff um all of phenomenal options for us to use it has reliable setup in every stat i think that's a lot of things i think that's something a lot of people don't know is that it actually gets set up in every stat it gets sword stance for attack it gets bulk up for attack and defense it gets uh calm mind for attack and spadef i think it gets amnesia but i could be wrong on that one um and then it gets rock polish for the speed so i can literally boost any stat at any given time should i choose it gets lots of coverage for both physical and special special lando is actually not a it's not a bad bring and it's definitely a threat that people sleep on so i'm really hoping to catch some people off guard with that special maybe in call my landers uh, or maybe even a specs lander that'd be kind of fire um love landers phenomenal pokemon can do pretty much anything i need it to except for switching ice type moves uh just reliable good old reliable and uh mufasa the king so going into round two, I was playing off of what Kyle wanted. Uh, I really expected Kyle to take Celesteela, if I'm being honest. Uh, I really expected him to take that and then, like, something else good. But uh, he decided to do something crazy, and uh, I'm not going to spoil what it is. You guys got to go check out Kyle's analysis to uh, see his crazy pick. Or if you guys checked out the draft stream, this should be going up right at the draft stream. Um, go check out, uh, if you guys didn't check it out, Owen and D-Ray probably did a phenomenal job on it. I wasn't there, but they probably did a phenomenal job on it. And if they didn't, well, then that's their problem. Um, Kyle decided to go with something funky, fun funky, funky fresh. So our option of Aegislash versus Celesteela was still there. So I actually had three options. I went into Goons. Shouts to all my guys, Owen, Ollie, Jay Bear, John, Jay. Shouts to all my guys who helped me out during the draft. Box as well. Box was another huge help during the draft. Uh, shouts to everyone who helped me out with the draft. I think Kino helped me out for a little bit as well, or just gave me opinions. Um, we, we, I had options in the beginning. I could either go Lando T Age Slash, Lando T Celesteela, which is a core I'm very comfortable using because we literally just hopped off the Celesteela train. Um, or we could go Lando T Melmetal. So the reason I decided to go, or the reason I narrowed, or how I narrowed out my options were Lando T Melmetal is the one I was least leaning towards. Um, I wasn't super excited about it, but it was something cool. Just let, Melmetal seemed like a really fun mon, but I do have it in a showdown league I'm currently playing in. And it, uh, it's really fun there. So I thought it could be fun, but I decided against that just because it didn't really offer a whole lot. Uh, and it's a death set isn't much. So my steel type not actually switching into ice types wasn't the best. And this kind of went to Turby for Celesteela. That, and we literally just hopped off the, the double, uh, the two peat with Celesteela going to uh, both NCP finals and winning BBL, uh, BBL with it. We really didn't, I really didn't want to use Celesteela again. I'm one of those people that will use the same Pokemon 85 times again, but I am a little bit tired of Celesteela. In the last three months, I've uploaded 26 draft league games, st single standard draft league games, and I brought Celesteela to, I think it's like 21 of them or something like that. So I'm chill taking a break on Celesteela. Uh, and that's why we decided to go with none other than Stone our Aegislash, so Stone. If you guys don't get it, it's the Sword and the Stone. I should actually pull that up. I have my nicknames written down on a piece of notepad, just in case I don't remember them. Actually, I didn't write them all down. I have to open sports. I'm oh so professional, and I'm not gonna cut this out because I am professional, a professional YouTuber. Yeah, it doesn't need to stall. Perfect. Okay, so we picked up Aegislash, uh, shiny Aegislash, not on the thing, but it is on my uh, showdown here. Uh, Sword in the Stone, because Disney Sword in the Stone, yeah, uh, you know, Sword in the Stone. Really cool. I felt like it was cooler than naming it, like, I could have named it Sits, Sword in the Stone, but Stone just sounds so cool. It sounds so badass. It's got that bloody Aegislash look with the black and the red. I just feel like it's super cool. Uh, Aegislash Salmon, I've had a, I've had a very interesting relationship with. I tried it once in PBAL. And uh, I used it very poorly. I didn't, I, I'm very weird. I couldn't get it to work. Uh, I just couldn't get it, I couldn't use it properly. But I feel like I've grown a lot and I feel like I have better build support uh, with my boys and just knowing my own knowledge. I feel like I could probably use it better. It's a steel type that doesn't mind getting burned sometimes because it can go special. Um, it has incredible speed at 140, 140 when in uh, shield form. I guess I can just look over here. Uh, when it in shield form, it has base 140 defenses. Base 60 speed is very useful for autonomized sets. Can run mixed, can run life orb, can run bandage, source stance. Um, I think it gets iron defense. You get iron defense? Yeah, you get iron defense. Uh, get some really cool moves. Also, not afraid to run subtoxic. I'm saying this now for everybody who checks this out. I am not afraid to run subtoxic and stall some people down. I am not afraid. I do not care about all the goonies in the comment section who will yell at me. Learn to play bonds if you don't like subtoxic. That's my PSA on that. 
Um, love Age Slash though. I think it's really cool and I'm really excited to give it another try. This might be the make or break for it. If I can't get Age Slash to work, it might go on that, that list of Pokemon for me that I just cannot use for whatever reason. It's up there with like Snorlax and shit. Uh, Snorlax and Clefable. I'm really not good at using those type of Pokemon. So Age Slash might have to join that list if we can't get it to work here. Round three. We actually decided to go a little bit more in a comfort zone. Um, again, that long wait. So I wanted to pick up something to break down bulky waters uh, and give me that momentum, uh, that volt turn, uh, start giving me that volt turn core. I was looking at some of them nice electric types I really wanted, Rotom Wash, but a certain dickhead named D-Ray took it, even though I said it in a call that I really wanted Rotom Wash. He's like, I'm taking Rotom Wash, you suck. Um, he picked before me, so I can't even be mad, but like, fuck you, D-Ray, I wanted that thing, so sad but uh looking at it there wasn't a whole lot of options because i really wanted thundy t that was actually the option i wanted and then Liv took it at the other side of the wheel so i was like well that sucks um and then josh took the other thunder so i couldn't even get that so i was like all right so my options were zirkatry and raikou um and the big change or the big decision for me was the speed tier and i decided to bring back our uh one of our mvps from last season our playoff mvp uh, Simba, our Raikou. I decided to bring him back from last season, and that is because of the speed tier. 115 is a very nice speed tier to have, especially with the plan that I had in mind. My The 115 speed tier was very hard to replace if I lost out on Raikou. If I went Zergatry, there was very few options I could actually take to replace that 115 speed tier that wouldn't hurt me more than help me. I felt like Raikou, I'm very comfortable with it. I used it very well last season. Um, 115 speed tier, breaks the waters perfectly how I need it to, gives me that volt turn option with Landorus, gives me a setup option if I need to, can just run straight breaker as well. Um, again, subtoxic, not afraid to do it, did it against Jesse last season. So uh, I love Raikou, I think it's a phenomenal Pokemon and uh, came back from last season after being a huge playoff crutch. Uh, and I'm really hoping he can actually take it all the way this time. He did take us all the way, but hopefully we can actually win once we get to all of the way so really excited for Raikou the the dog core is not done though we have two dogs but we have another dog coming up right just right around the corner so round five is actually a Pokemon I've been planning since round one let me pull her pull her up here um round five is a little bit interesting and this mon's debatable whether I actually should have taken it round five really wanted to wait on it but there was nothing else I needed in the draft so I'm, th I'm sitting there thinking like I don't need anything why should I take this but there was nothing else of value that was worth taking yet um, at least for me. There was nothing I needed to prioritize. There was no like certain mon I needed on my team. So I decided to take this just because it guaranteed me got it guaranteed got it. And uh, you know, I really wanted to try it out. And that is a Pokemon I've been trying for a very long time to fit on my team, which is actually a lot of these Pokemon. There are a lot of Pokemon on this team that I've been trying to put on drafts for a very long time and I could not get them to work. Age Slash has always been one that's a little bit awkward for me. I have a lot of, I have a couple later tier picks that I've been really trying to use for a long time. And uh, it was like Ozzy from last season, really trying to fit things on. So this mod I've been wanting to use for a very long time and that is none other than Celebi. Um, now Celebi is often overlooked just because of Shaman sitting right there. Shaman is just 100% better than Celebi in every way, shape, and form. Better recovery with rest uh, or synthesis. I guess recovery, you could argue. Um, it gets more move coverage. It gets natural cures, a better ability. Oh wait, no, Celebi gets natural cure. I'm stupid, sorry. Um, it's not four times weak to bug, which it, it, it can actually be like a ground type pivot, a ground type with U-turn, AKA Landorus. Um, but I figured taking Celebi here, especially when we have Landorus, we don't have to worry about checking a Landorus, which is really nice. Um, which is like the big throwaway of Celebi is that you really can't check Landers because U-Turn just kills it. But Celebi, I feel like people shit on Celebi for a lot. Um, it does give me another U-Turn Mon. It gives me another Rocker. It gives me a Grass type. It gives me that Ground uh, or Resist to pair with Raikou, who just we picked up with Weakness as long along with Age Last. We have two Weak and two Resists, or uh, Resist and Immune if you want to be technical about it. Um, gives me another Rocker. Gives me another U-Turn. And gives me a really cool Pokemon. Gives me a Psychic type as well, which is why I didn't want to. This is why I picked up Raikou because I could have went something like Ace Elf. But I wanted that Volt Turn core, and uh, I I didn't really want uh, I wanted Celebi, and the Grass type was very hard to fit on the team. But I needed that Ground Resist really really bad, and I couldn't pick a, pick up something like Moongus or Rose Race since it doesn't actually resist Ground. Um, Celebi gets obviously it gets both Calm Mind and Nasty Plot. It gets some nice coverage and stuff like D Gleam or Sphere is a Psychic type, so it does get the Psychic and Psy Shock, Leaf Storm, Giga Drain, very offensive. Uh, kind of more just offensive shaman in a source. It also gets that healing wish tech we are we are here for. We love healing wish, kind of replacing that Latias's role of last season. So really excited to use Celebi. Been wanting to use it for a very long time, but either I get Tangrowth or Shaman or I get like some like Amoongus and Rosray and get a different uh ground resist. So really been wanting to try Celebi for a long, long time, and there wasn't a whole lot I wanted to fit on my team at the time. So 
round number five comes around and uh, a certain somebody's hogging all the fucking water types. Everybody's taking their waters because some, some dude who picks after me at pick 16 decided to take all the fucking water types. Uh, so everyone took that as a cue as we need to take our bulky waters now. So every water type was getting taken out of the board. So I had to take mine. This was actually like my kind of my last pick for water type but I decided to go with it, and that is none other than Nala, our Suicune. Nala obviously being from The Lion King as well, also fitting the dog theme uh, with the uh, the Lando and the Raikou. I guess cat you could say as well. Dog, cat, four-legged animal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we picked up Nala, our Suicune. Now, I wasn't actually totally here for Suicune because it is very fat and annoying, and uh, I felt like my team was kind of just I don't know, my team is very offensive, so Suicune gave me that really bulky Pokemon that people have to just deal with. Um, and I know a lot of people hate facing Suicune, which is very fun for me because I don't have to face it. Um, but I feel, I don't know, I wasn't superly overhyped to get Suicune. I really wanted to get something like Tanacruel or Blastoise, but those were all went and uh, Seismitoad was gone as well. Uh, so I really wanted to get a good water. Uh, just to kind of wall other waters, give me a good ice switch in. This really checks, even Mons with freeze dry, it can check very well. Like, I think it can check Kiram, which, uh, to an extent, which is really nice. Not Kiram Black, but regular Kiram. You can check to an extent. So, it just gave me a really good ice switch in, which we've, uh, really lacked because Raikou doesn't resist, Lando is weak, Celebi's weak, and Age Slash can only switch in so many times. Um, and if we're in sword form, then we're not actually switching in anything, or we're not taking a hit, should we not kill whatever has the ice type move. So, I wanted a really good ice resist, and, uh, this was probably the best water type left on the board. I'll also give me that uh, triple dog and a lot of people really wanted me to get Entei, uh, which I may or may not do later on to complete the core. Uh, Suicune, if you guys don't know, it's just fat and annoying. Clicks Calm Mind, Sub, Scald, Toxic. It's pretty much Sub-Toxic the Pokemon, which is why I say I'm not afraid to use Sub-Toxic as a strat, because Sub-Toxic is very beatable if you draft properly and you play properly, um, but for people who don't know how to beat it, shit's unbeatable and uh, i think it's very funny when people lose a sub toxic so love I, i'm not gonna say i love the strategy because it's not like the most fun thing to do but i would rather i'm here to win i'm here to win especially after last season i'm here to show what i can do I'm here to show i'm a threat I'm here to show that i can play with the big dogs i'm no longer at the kitty table i'm here to play with the big dogs so we're here to take down the big dogs um and show who we are who we is we is the disneylanders so we're here to show up with the suicune even if that means sub toxic stalling people to death so our sixth member is aromatisse we decided to pick up aromatisse for it uh, to give us some fairy typing uh pair wish past wishes into our already fat Aegislash, slash but also in stuff like landers or even suicune i'm cheeky enough to do that shit um just really fat annoying pokemon also gives me a potential Trick Room option, which is uh, kind of something you really don't see in Draft League, but I feel like Trick Room and Age Slash, some teams are going to be very unprepared for, and uh, that could really just open up Age Slash to break people down, especially if they expect auto and we run zero speed uh, Trick Room. They could be at really fucked up there. So I, I really like Aromacy as a cleric Pokemon. It's a Pokemon I'm very comfortable using. I've used Aromacy many, many times, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of people use it very badly, uh, very passively. I think I'm actually not bad using Wish Pass. Um, and kind of planning out how I'm supposed to get things in and wish past stuff. Uh, it's obviously not the best, it's not my best strategy, but it is it's obviously a very annoying Pokemon people to deal with. It can't be taunted thanks to Aroma, is it Aroma Veil? Is that what it's called? Yeah, Aroma Veil can't be taunted, can't be encored, can't be any of that. Um, so it just makes it a really good cleric. It's basically with a free mental herb, except all of the time. So really love Aromatisse, not a whole lot to say. Also Secret Heart is, uh, Disney did like a, a perfume called Secret Heart, and I felt like that was a really cool name for Aromatisse, because it's like the, the, the scent Pokemon. So I felt like that was really cool. So uh, just a cool nickname there, and uh, overall really cool Pokemon with uh, some cool utility at, uh, at its hands. All right, so here we are for round number seven. And uh, round number seven is when things started going down hill so uh we really me and box sit down and finished up a plan with this roster and it looked really awesome and then we got double sniped of our next two picks our next two picks were supposed to be incineroar and tokomo both went instantly um and that was really bad komo went right before us or uh incineroar kelly, kelly took a couple picks before us and then incineroar uh, komo went right before us jv son of a gun took it right before our pick and i felt like that would have been a really awesome pick to have unfortunately we lost it so we kind of had to improvise and uh i came up with a kind of cool plan it looks a little bit y a janky on paper but uh it works nonetheless so our first member or our next member i should say uh first of this wheel here is thunderclap our aerodactyl and i gotta pick up my notepad here thunderclap is the antagonist of the good dinosaur uh which and he's a, he's the flying birdie boy so really cool pokemon aerodactyl is a very weird pokemon because it's not good at a whole lot of things but it's not bad at anything 
Um, very fast paced 130 speed. It gives me some good setup options. You got DD this gen, which is really cool. As uh, you set up a DD with a base 130 Pokemon, nothing's really gonna outspeed that shit. Uh, it hits very hard, gives me Rockhead, so if I want to run that uh, Head Smash Rockhead, that'd be kind of fire. Uh, some decent coverage, stuff like Aqua Tail, uh, Edge Quake, gets Reliable Flying Stab, unlike Landorus, Ice Fang, I believe it gets Thunder Fang, I don't think it gets Fire Fang though, I think it gets two of the Fangs, but not the third one for some reason, so. Um, it also gives me another Rocker, another Defogger, um, another very bulky Pokemon. I have used bulky Aerodactyl in the past to check stuff like uh, Salazzle or just Offensive Fire types. It actually doesn't have, it doesn't have the worst bulk, it doesn't have the best bulk by any means, 80, 65, 75. Um, but it is usable in some scenarios, very, very sp uh, specific scenarios. But uh, it can be used nonetheless, so I think Aerodactyl, kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. But uh, it's a jack of all trades. It definitely can put in some work in uh, some spe specific matchups. And uh, another reliable rocker, so I don't have to run rocks on my lander, so my Celebi gives me a really good fast uh, Pokemon. Also gives me taunt option. Also gives me another taunter, uh, which could be nice as a dedicated lead. So that's Thunderclap. Pick number eight, we go with Pepe Le Pew, the Skun Tank, um, Mr. Stinky Man. So originally I wanted to go Drapion on the set. I want to bring back Mortal Potion. But I decided to go Skun Skun Tank because we needed the points for a pick down the line. Uh, I believe it's actually our next pick. Uh, we needed the points for it. So Skun Tank, I'm not gonna lie, I actually don't like Skun Tank a whole lot. Um, but it was kind of the best fit at the time. I needed Ground of Poison, needed Dark type, needed another Defogger. So my only Defoggers at this point were Landorus and Aerodactyl. So uh, I felt like I needed that hazard removal and I really wanted the T-Spike option, but I felt like Skun Tank offered everything Drapion could at a little bit less value but also give me another Defogger, which was very uh, good for my team because I really don't want to be running Defog or Rocks my Landers. I want to be running Offensive Landers as much as I can since that shit hurts. Skun Tank is another kind of Jack of all trades, master of none Pokemon. Um, it gets coverage. It obviously gets the poison and dark coverage stuff like, uh, it also, it's a dark type thing can knock off, which is another huge turn off for me, but it does get stuff like uh, Sludge Bomb. It gets Poison Jab. It gets Crunch. It gets Night Slash. It gets Player for physical. It gets Nasty Plot. So it can be like a kind of like an offensive of breaker type of thing it does get flamethrower for steel types uh so kind of like a cool niche kind of cool pokemon i don't know i'm not a huge fan of skun tank i'm gonna be honest but i felt like it fit the team very well so maybe in like conjunction with like wish pass from aromatis it might not be as bad as i give it shit for but uh it's not my favorite mon to use i would rather drapeon but i needed the points here so i feel like it just it it fills all the holes i needed uh which is really funny because me and owen's like okay just write down a list of everything your team needs and we'll figure it out and i wrote it down and skun tank literally hit like everything on that list even though i didn't like it so he kind of fits the team uh so maybe he'll prove me wrong this season and he'll actually be kind of a goat so round numero nine we get another Pokemon I've been trying to use for a very, very, very long time. We saw this Pokemon. We were talking about this Pokemon in tiering preseason. Uh, we did the tiering. It was me, Owen, D-Ray, Liv, and Shuckle King helped us out because he was around. Uh, we decided to do tiering one night, and uh, this Pokemon, everyone voted to move it down. And I was like, are you guys sure we want to move this down? Everyone's like, yeah, let's move it down. And uh, I said, okay, and then I yoinked that shit up, and that is none other than the Flying Fish Gyarados. Its nickname is actually Flying Fish. It's not like a, fl it, it's actually, its nickname for the season is Flying Fish, because Dis Disney's Flying Fish Cafe. Uh, I believe that's in Disneyland or Disney World, one of the two. Flying Fish Cafe is really cool, it serves fish and stuff. Um, so, flying fish, flying type, water type, fish. You guys get it. Um, I really want to try Gyarados for a very, very long time. I think it's you. I think it has an insane move pool. I feel like it's kind of like Ozzy from last season. People sleep on it because it's a very awkward fit in drafts. But when it's on teams, people get fucked up by it. It gets insane coverage. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at this shit for you guys. Gets Dragon Dance, and then on top of that, it gets Fire Blast and Flamethrower. It gets Hurricane, Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, Earthquake, Dragon Pulse. Iron Head, Power Whip, Stone Edge, Thunder, Thunder Bolt, Thunder Wave, Toxic, gets Roar, it gets um, it gets Intimidate and Moxie, two amazing abilities, and it also gets access to Heavy Booty Dudes, which is weird because he doesn't even have feet. How does he wear shoes? I don't get it. Look at him. Look at him. He's right there. How does he wear shoes? He doesn't have feet, but nonetheless, he's going to be wearing Heavy Duty Boots, so we got to worry about Stealth Rock damage, so Fat Gyarados is the Goat Gyarados. Um, I think this Mon, people are going to sleep on it. It's going to, I feel like Gyarados is going to be a lot like Azu from last season. Gyarados is going to be that sleeper pick that people will have been like, this Mon's kind of okay. And then they get in a matchup against it. They're like, I can't deal with Gyarados. It fucks me up. What the hell? Yeah, because people sleep on Gyarados. It's a really good Pokemon. It's just very hard to pit on draft plans. So it's one of those Pokemon. If you just put it on there and just don't think about it, 
it, it works. We have tons of electric coverages in stuff like Landers, Stellabee, Raikou. Uh, Aromacy is really fat and annoying. It also gives me that offensive defensive water that we had from last season. Suicune being in the defensive water, Gyarados being the offensive water. But the good news is that they can actually flip flop roles. Gyarados can be a defensive water, Suicune can be an offensive water. Both do both really well. So I actually really like the, the water pick this season in conjunction with each other. Um, but I'm very, 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 very excited to use Gyarados season. I feel like he's very cool, very awesome setup sweeper. And uh, I feel like it's a lot of coverage and a lot of people are going to sleep on Mr. Fishy Man. All right. So pick number 10. We are so close to finishing out here. Uh, there were two picks. We knew what I, I knew exactly what I wanted and I figured neither would get sniped, but I decided to take this one first just because it was more likely to get sniped than the other one because a lot of people didn't have points left uh, or wouldn't have points for what I was planning. So we decided to pick up El Toro, our Buffalon. Now, Buffalon is kind of just low tier budget normal. Um, it hits very, very hard though. It is the boof. It is the big oof. Base 95s across the board for defenses and then 110 attack. Uh, people sleep on Buffalon. This one's actually really bulky and very annoying for teams. Uh, it shit hits hard. And uh, I feel like people, I feel like people really don't respect Buffalon. This mom was only two points, I think. How much was it on the duck? It was three points. This mom was cheaper than double. And I feel like after using double last season, double's kind of ass. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, double kind of ass. So I feel like Buffalon's actually better. Even just looking through its move pool and its potential, it's like some head calc. Buffalon just seems better for a cheaper price than last season. So I don't know why I didn't pick this thing up. But uh, El Toro gets a lot of insane coverage. It can actually check ghost types. Spoiler alert, unlike Double could, uh, this thing can actually check dose types, which is really nice. Um, and his overall is kind of a, a low tier budget breaker for our team, which we don't really have. We have a lot of setup potential. We have, stuff, we have Landers who can set up, we have Raikou who can set up, we have Selby who can set up, we have Gyarados who can set up, we have Aegislash who, who can set up. We don't have raw breaking power. Our raw breaking power right now is Raikou and Lando. Uh, Aegislash to an extent, I guess Aegislash as well, um, but all three of those can go either way. Celebi doesn't really break shit, neither does really. Gyarados can, but not really. So I really wanted some raw breaking power with these last two picks. So Buffalon gave me a really cheap normal. Uh, kind of, I didn't really care about the speed tier since we do have a lot of slower things. We actually do have a miniature trick room team here. We have the Aromatis, we have the Age Slash, we have the Buffalon. We have our last pick as well, who is kind of slow and uh, very strong as a breaker as well. So I really like Buffalon. I think it's going to come to more games than Double did. And uh, I think people are going to get fucked up by, uh, by the big oof here with the base 110 attack. So... Rounding out our draft, coming in at the final pick, I've been wanting to use this mon since late Gen 6. I went all of the Gen 7 era without using it, and that is none other than Hercules the Machamp. I've been wanting to use this mon for so, so long, but it just never fit, or like the one time I got it to fit, it would get sniped. Like, it was the hardest Pokemon to ever fit on a draft land, but I've been really wanting to try Machamp for so long. Um, because it gets, I feel like it's a really good sleeper pick. It gets amazing coverage for a fighting type. Gets uh, poison jab and uh, heavy slam for fairies, which are huge detours. It gets knockoff for uh, so bulky psychic as well as throat chop. It gets guts and no guard. Guts is really nice. I can run a flame warp. I can get burned. I can be AV switching the scalds if I get burned free. Um, and then free guts boost. Nothing. Base 130 attack with guts. Yeah, shit does not switch in. Close combat for reliable stab. It gets bullet punch as a really nice priority option. Um, it gets no guard focus punch. Focus punch is based 150, right? Is it focus punch? Is it one, 150 power, but it's, uh, oh wait, no, it's not focus punch. What am I thinking of? Uh, dynamic punch is what I'm thinking of. Base 50 accuracy, base 100 uh, power, but 100% chance to confuse. Get that nice and cheeky confusion with the dynamic punch, uh, no guard. Overall, I think Machamp is a huge sleeper. Huge, huge sleeper. Also gonna be a bulk up option, but I feel like that never happens. Um, Machamp is just a huge, huge sleeper pick, and I'm really, really, really excited to use him because I've tried so many fighting types, and I honestly love a lot of fighting types. Love stuff like Hariyama, Sock, uh, Girder, uh, and then higher tier stuff. You got like, I've uh, used Lucario, who is really fun, Conkelder, Buzzwool. I feel like a, a good fighting type can actually do a lot for a draft. Heracross as well. Uh, I've used a lot of really good fighting types, but I've been really wanting to try with Champ. I feel like it, it's one of those mods where if you moved it cheaper, it would be way too cheap. But if you moved it higher, it would never get drafted. And where it is, it, it rarely gets drafted. So it's very hard to fit my Champ on a draft plan. But I decided to say, fuck it. I want my Champ on this draft plan. After I got sent to Komoo, I said, fuck it. My Champ is going on this draft plan. I don't care in which way. 
it's going on this draft plan. So we made it work. We got Buffalon and Gyarados to finish out the plan here. And uh, I'm very, very, very excited to uh, to rock out with the squad this season. I think it looks a little bit awkward on paper, but I feel like it gives me every Pokemon on this team is not one dimensional. Every Pokemon on this team gives me tons of options each week. Um, tons of creativity in the, in the building process, which has probably been my favorite part of Draft League recently. has been building teams and uh, mocking with them and testing things out and making sure uh, the teams run smoothly because I really do like having that build, um, build options in uh, in prep. So really love the squad here. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, this season, speaking of fun, we have a lot of good coaches and we got one hell of a schedule. Um, so our schedule is definitely not nice, but when you look at the whole the whole league, the league is not nice. There is nobody in this league who you would you could call a bad battler or a free win. Um, like everybody knows, everybody could take me down very easily. Also, there's a broken part of the dock here. I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're gonna run down our schedule. If you guys don't know, every time I do a draft analysis type of thing, I run down my schedule to kind of give you guys a season prediction and let you guys know if I'm playing your favorite PokeTuber and when I'm playing your favorite PokeTuber. So, we start off our season with my boy. I was very excited when he took over mid-draft. We take on Davion, coach of the Vegas Golden D Knights. Very excited to play Davion. I've played him since the IBA days, uh, since I won that season four season, uh, which was like two years ago or something like that. It was in 2019, I believe. So haven't played him in forever. Very excited. He killed it in BBR this season. So I'm very, very, very excited to play him. Uh, week two, we play D-Ray. And boy, oh boy, if I'm sweating for a match, it's against D-Ray. This dude has caused me so much headache running this league behind the scenes. Y'all don't, you don't even know. Behind the scenes, there's been a lot of headache with D-Ray. I love D-Ray to death. He's my boy. I love him. He's going to get smacked across his head. Smack, 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 smack. Like, you are getting whooped again, kid. I'm tired of you and your nonsense. Wish I could be, bu get Buzzwool just to 6-0 D-Ray with Buzzwool again. Um, but don't worry. We'll find another way to 6-0 D-Ray in his goofy ass again. Uh, week number three, we take on Kelly, coach of the Maryland Tour Terrapins. He came out of retirement again, uh, and he's got a really fire draft. I'd go check out Kelly's draft analysis. He's got a really fire team. Like, honestly, I would use the fuck out of Kelly's team. This team looks fun as hell. Uh, week number four, we play Jish, but Jish without a fish. Spoiler alert, Josh did not draft Dracovish again. He is Jish without a fish. So hopefully, we might actually be able to beat Jish without a fish. My headphone fell out. Jish has no fish. And that's just like... What? The last two seasons, we're just used to calling him Jish with a fish, but he has no fish now. So that's going to be an interesting one. Week number five, we play Platinum Howler, coach of the Delta Gligars. I've gone head-to-head -head with Howler twice, and Howler's kicked my ass twice because he's a matchup on me both times. First time in Academy, I just did not deal with uh, with his team. He had a really cool team. I don't remember what it is, but I remember he beat my ass. And then uh, we played him BBL. And he had Urshifu, Calyrex Ice, and Genesect, which was probably the most unfair team I've ever seen in my life. So... Maybe, maybe I won't get CT by Howler. Although, I do want to say, Howler is the one that sniped me the most in the draft. I wanted Keldeo, he took that. I wanted Cinderace, he took that. And there was something else that he took that I wanted as well. Howler sniped the fuck out of me this draft. So, I want my revenge. And I want my Keldeo back. I want my Keldeo and my Cinderace back. Because I really, really wanted those. Uh, if I got Cinderace, I wasn't going to get Raikou. And I was going to get Zerg Tree. And it was going to be a really cool plan. But, uh, fine, I'll end up with Raikou again. Week number six, we play my boy JV. Uh, he's not going to be a replacement this time. He is the head coach. He drafted the team all by himself. He's a big boy. And uh, I was helping JV prep for his IBA playoff games. And uh, he's definitely learning a lot. He's definitely improving very, very quickly. And uh, I'm very excited to play him again. Hopefully, hopefully, he should have beat us last season. Hopefully, we can actually take him down legit this time. Um, I want to play JV and I want to take him down. But I want to take him down not because I dodged a power whip. Because I actually beat his ass. Um, week number seven, we play Liv. Liv is going hard this season. Um, I don't know if Liv has announced this publicly, so I'm not actually going to say it. But uh, Liv is getting a little bit of burnt out of Wi-Fi leagues. So Liv is going hard in the paint for this one. So uh, we got to take on Liv. And uh, I think she's got a she got a really good player helping her. I don't remember who is. But she got somebody helping her this season who uh, definitely is no slouch nonetheless. Week number eight, we play Leo. Six of Hacks, our BBL Finals opponent. Uh, Leo is definitely somebody who knows what he's doing. We've gone head-to-head -head with Leo twice. We took him down twice in the last couple months, but that does not mean that Leo is any slouch by any means. Leo is a phenomenal player, always has been, and always will be, and he has a really good team, so uh, I'm definitely nervous for Leo. Week number nine, we play Shuckle King, coach of the OK Rilla Boomers. Um, his team, there, there's, a, there's a way of drafting called Shuckle Drafting, where in, on paper, it doesn't look conventional, 
but if it works in the hand coach in the hands of the coach it works and shuckle is pretty much the epitome of that although he does have dragapult i've realized we've come to realize if shuckle doesn't have dragapult he can't win leagues uh, <laughs> last se last season was the first season shuckle didn't have dragapult oh no he did have dragapult um he, he's just we've this shuckles very good dragapult so he doesn't have dragapult so we can fucking not worry about him and dragapult anymore but he didn't win last season so it's beatable smile i've saved my sentence and last but not least we end our season out with hello we play mid pokey master um mid better give me fucking zygarde by the time we play but if he does it then i'm gonna kick his ass because i want fucking zygarde um not that i don't like landers i love landers but i've used it and i've really been on the zygarde high i really wanted to try it lately but everywhere it just keeps not letting me get zygarde i really really want it man so I, i'm gonna keep bugging mid to give me zygarde but uh hopefully he he will and if not then he'll get his ass whooped but he's gonna get his ass whooped anyway so who cares uh and then we're gonna say hello uh so that is our season i'm very excited for this season uh i'm hoping we can go seven and three last season we, we went six and four i'm really hoping we can go seven and three but we have an insanely tough roster this season insanely tough schedule and uh uh even the players we don't play are insanely good i believe the players we don't play are owen og albina we avoided him unfortunately uh kyle a in vivid color um vepsis and matt o'shea are who we avoided so all five very good players uh and definitely good content creators as well so i think we uh we didn't get an easy schedule we didn't get a hard schedule I, no, no, i'm not gonna say we didn't get a hard schedule either because we got a really good players i don't think there is such thing as an easy schedule in this season um i definitely can't say that this season so i'm definitely nervous hopefully we go six and three though and uh prove ourselves better and make another run at the finals but i would stop r r rambling in circles i'm gonna hop out of here so if you guys did enjoy our draft analysis and are excited for the ntp season please hit the like button and subscribe button as it would really mean a lot to me i know a lot of you are probably going to come out from the draft stream and from other channels come check me out and i really do appreciate you taking the time stop on by and check us out we do a lot of draft league content here and i'm very excited to bring you guys ncp season five so next sunday week one against davion very excited but with that i'm gonna hop on out of here thank you guys so much for watching mine's your curtain i'll see you guys next time peace i'm out